Hello everyone, my name is Simon Mishevich and I'm Louise Mishevich. Special guest for today, we're going to be talking about the budget. Uh, this is the Labour Party Autumn Budget for 2024 and we're going to focus on residential property investors. And one thing I would say about this budget announcement was I, I usually I find myself thinking oh, I'm grimacing because I'm going to have to tell all of our clients the big bad wolf is in the house and it's going to blow their houses down. I personally didn't feel that was the case. Uh, there were one big, big issue that I'm going to be talking about. And then there's one that I thought, hmm, okay, we're leveling the playing field with business owners and people that have cryptocurrencies and uh, other types of investments. Um, but let's get the big white elephant out in the room out of the way, stamp duty. Now there are three levels of stamp duty and I will do a lot bigger presentations on this because there's so much analysis that we need to do on this. But in bulk, we have three categories. We have the banded rate for residential property investments for stamp duty. Then we have the what was the additional rate and we'll talk about that in a second. And then the foreign surcharge as well. Now they didn't change the banded rate, but they did change the additional rate. So please unveil what that was. I would love, love to be saying that they reduced it, but of course I would be lying through my teeth and I'm not about to do that to any of you guys. So sadly they're increasing it by 2% to a whopping 5% for second properties. Here's the kicker from midnight. You mm. really, really don't have a lot of opportunity and time to sort things out. We have clients completing on properties tomorrow. We're really encouraging them to do everything they can to bring it forward to today to minimise those extra costs wherever they can. I mean, 2%, let's put this into perspective, but if you're buying a, a £100,000 house, how much are we talk about? Well, it's an extra £2,000 you need to find in your wonderful coffers because, of course, you'll have lots of spare cash left over once yeah. you've completed all the other expenses and activities you need to do to buy a property. But the average house isn't 100,000, it's circa 300,000. So we're talking at least 6,000 pounds, I would say. Yes. Additional from tonight. And this is going to go out on Wednesday. What date we are? We are <laughs> Wednesday. We are Wednesday. So this is, but that's a kicker. So the that is a major, major issue. And I it, it goes back to, we have a banded rate. We have now this 5%. One thing they didn't say was they was going to increase stamp duty for foreign investors from 2% to 3%. I don't think they said anything about that. They didn't say anything about that. So that, if you're a foreign investor, maybe that's saving grace, but actually you're not. it's not much of a saving grace because they pushed up the 3% to 5%. So you've got a 2% charge extra anyway. But it's, it's going to really bring to question how you invest. And one thing I was listening to this was, back to the old buy commercial property whether that's offices or something like that go for permitted development convert it to residential sell it do some nice uh, proper stuff about tax planning on this side of things mm. but you can save a lot of money now on stamp duty to land tax based on commercial rates versus non uh, commercial rates as in residential property and don't forget as well of course that to benefit from commercial rates it could be a mixed use property. It could be mm. a shop on the ground floor with an apartment above. So uh, you could already have partly residential and get it for non-residential SDLT. Absolute ka -ching and still very much worth looking at. More so from midnight, I would argue. Yeah, and of course the 3% doesn't affect people buying six or more properties because six or more properties is still non-residential rates. Uh, we know that multiple dwellings relief is gone. So if you're buying two, three, four, five properties, that saving grace is now gone, yeah. but six pro properties or more, you still get non-residential properties. So be on the lookout for uh, blocks of flats that contain maybe bed sits, that are self-contained bed sits, because they could be dwellings, and even though not split title, it could benefit you to look at that quite closely, and say, well, actually, is it six dwellings, six self-contained units? And if so, you've got the lower uh, rates of stamp duty land tax. Um, the other side of this budget was capital gains tax and everyone was really worried about are they going to push up capital gains tax, making it income tax. That didn't happen and I was quite, Ooh, wow, where did that come from? It felt a bit of a knee-jerk reaction from all the noise that's in the media. What did they do though? 
Well, what they have done is they've basically equalized the playing field for anybody with assets that they are selling. So now, unfortunately, if you're selling assets that are not residential, and we'll come on to this in a minute because this is really going to impact you if you are a property investor of all sorts of properties, um, they are now at basic rate 18%. So whether you're selling shares or other assets, it's 18% basic rate and 24% higher rate. So you basically, if you're a property investor, your capital gains tax rates have not changed on residential property. However, Simon, what has it affected properties and assets wise? No, why do you tell me? <laughs> it has affected offices, commercial oh. units, commercial units would have been at the lower rate alongside things like share sales of 10 and 20%. Well, we've just kissed goodbye to that from April next year. And we think it's April, although Rachel didn't talk about the exact date no. from when it was going to go live. Perhaps we'll see more of that in the subsequent scripts and data sets that are shared with us. But unfortunately, that does mean if you are selling an asset and it is subject to CGT, then from literally the 6th of April 2025, you're going to be paying a much higher capital gains tax rate. But again, back to my point earlier, it's not as bad as what we thought it was going to be. It's certainly not going to be income tax. There's a huge um, issue around that. I even released some videos to say how it could follow the United States, how it could follow Australia, Canada, but it didn't. It actually maintained this lower CGT rate, 24%, which is actually still better than 28%. It was a couple of years Absolutely. ago, right? So it's not a be all and end all. Now, the, obviously the attack of landlords around um, furnished holiday lets, we do need to remember that if you are following furnished holiday lets and the tax benefits you have of those, they will still end next year. Yes. There's no doubts about that. Um, and you just got to follow this budget closely because I, I just felt that the media was, and she even said that she was going to look at landlords as one of the targets for this budget. I can't see in this budget, apart from the stamp duty land tax, but I'm talking about people that have property currently in ownership how she's attacked them and I couldn't no. work that. No, and I, you know, the other thing that comes to mind is the fact that, and just moving slightly off CGT for a second, they were, there were a lot of rumour mongering going on about the personal allowance as being frozen beyond what has been set by the Conservative government to 2028 and that they would continue that. And they've obviously confirmed today that they won't. So that's good news. It's a small amount of good news, I appreciate, and it's a long way in the future, but actually, the areas that I thought she was going to hit hard on and affect people owning, for example, residential property for rental purposes has not been anywhere as bad as I thought it could be. Hmm. Like I say, I will be doing lots more videos in the upcoming uh, days and weeks, so be on the lookout for that. But I think for today, that wraps it up. It certainly does. Thank you.